Last week, I did a video explaining why I don't cater to critics and basically said, listen, we all have to give account to God. We all have to run the race God's called us to run. I, I can't tell you what race you're to run. You can't tell me what race I'm to run. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27, that like athletes competing in the games, we should be disciplined in all things and we should run our race so as to win. So at the end of our lives, we're going to give account for our lives, not for someone else's lives, right? We're going to give account for what we did with our life and how we responded to the calling of God. So I'm often challenged, well, why don't you do more of this? And why don't you focus more on this? And in particular, by, by very strong anti-charismatic critics, why don't you spend more time calling people out? So I, I've addressed that. But I, I want to illustrate a point, And I, I want to give a friendly challenge to my critics. All right, so let's, let's start with our first stack of, of books here. Uh, you know, God's called me to do a lot of, of writing over the years. So let's, let's grab our first stack here. All right, thank you, Kai. And um, commentaries. It, it, it takes a lot of years to write a commentary. So I've, I've got here my commentary on Jeremiah, which takes up the bulk of the volume that's sitting here on my desk. A commentary on Jeremiah in the, the revised edition of the Expositor's Bible Commentary. And then my commentary on the book of Job, The Faith to Challenge God. Uh, doing a new translation of Job was probably the hardest thing I could think I've ever done. And then my book, Israel's Divine Healer, 450 pages, 165,000 words uh, to this day, the most comprehensive study of divine healing in the Old Testament. So I'm just wondering for those that challenge me and say I don't spend enough time calling out charismatic error, um, which commentaries have you written or uh, major academic studies? Oh, you don't have time because you've got to concentrate on your calling to expose charismatic nonsense. And this is not your calling. Oh, okay, got it. No, no problem. We'll just put this stack over here. Let's get stack number two out here on my desk. Um, you know, Jewish ministry, that's, that's very important in Scripture. And Paul said the gospel is to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, also to the Greek in Romans 1.16. And we know that Paul writes in Romans 11, verses 11 to 15, that the salvation of Israel will mean life from the dead. So surely that's something that you want to be engaging in. So we've got this uh, study God with a 22-hour video class on countering the counter missionaries. A lot of work went into that. And then um, one, two, three, four, five, five volume series over 1500 pages on answering Jewish objections to Jesus. That's the fruit really of 20 years of interaction with the Jewish community and study and, and prayer and research and writing, maybe even more combined. So we've got those five volumes and then the real kosher Jesus which I wrote in response to Rabbi Shmuley Boteach's book, Kosher Jesus, The Real Kosher Jesus, and then Resurrection, which is another Jewish outreach book, a real eye-opener. And then to help Christians understand Jewish beliefs and practices, I've got a whole book on that, 60 questions Christians ask about Jewish beliefs and practices. And then my most translated book, Our Hands Are Stained with Blood, which deals with the history of anti-Semitism in the church, and then Christian anti-Semitism, which, which updates that and these critically important areas to call this out. So. I'm just curious to know what you're doing. And this is aside from all the debates I've had with rabbis and thousands of pages of interaction and emails back and forth with the rabbinic community and training and teaching others at seminary level to, to respond to Jewish objections to Jesus. I'm just curious to know what you've done because you're always challenging me about what I need to be doing. So please tell me what you've been doing in Jewish evangelism and apologetics and, and combating anti-Semitism in the church and all the, oh, that's not your calling. Oh, okay, got, I got it, got it. And you're too busy putting out those hit piece videos to, to be focused on Jewish events. But God, I got it. Okay, fine. All, all clear. Fair enough. Let me just move those out of the way. Let's, let's grab our next stack here. If I could kind of see my way around it. Oh, okay. Um, culture wars. I mean, that's, that's big. That's big. We're right in the thick of the battle with the culture wars now. And, and, and how, do we, how do we reach out to those who identify as LGBTQ with compassion? while standing against a destructive agenda. So a queer thing happened to America, 700 pages, 1,500 endnotes. That was based on research and writing over a six year period. And then big question, massive question being raised and challenged, can you be gay and Christian? A whole book on that. And, and then another one, outlasting the gay revolution, how we have to live strategies to live in such a way that we can now push back against the rising tide of LGBTQ plus activism. So, three books on that, major books. 
And then more broadly, saving a sick America. What do we do to, through the Bible, through the gospel, not by taking over, but by living out our lives? How can we see moral and cultural transformation? And then Jezebel's war with America, this demonic attack on our nation, and then the silencing of the lambs uh, about cancel culture. And then just our, the revolutionary calling to follow Jesus by life or by death, the book Revolution, and the changes that need to come in the church if we're bringing out those changes, revolution in the church. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm just wondering, because you're always telling me what I need to be doing and what I should be concentrating on. Uh, please tell me about the, the books you've written, Equipping the Body on the Culture Wars, and, and, and the material that you've put out to help the church combat serious deception and error and, and pro-life related work that's in these books as well. And, the, and uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's not your calling. You don't feel a burden to, oh, okay, got it, got it. All, all clear, my, my, my bad there. And, and of course you don't have time because you're, you're writing all these articles exposing charismatic error. Okay, all, all clear, got it, got it. Um, let's just grab another set of books here. Um, okay, what, what about revival? I mean, that's First Great Awakening America, Second Great Awakening America, revival. I mean, it's revival or we die. It's, it's, we must see revival in the church or America is going to completely collapse. So I'm, I'm just curious to know about the books you've written on revival. I've, I've got the very first one that I wrote on revival, The End of the American Gospel Enterprise. And then From Holy Laughter to Holy Fire and then another edition, Time for Holy Fire. And then responding to questions and criticisms about revival, there's the revival answer book. And then more recently, uh, Revival or We Die that I wrote. And then uh, Seize the Moment, Seize the Moment, which, which just came out earlier this year about how to fuel the fires of revival, what happens when God comes, how do you cultivate that and, and, and really sustain what God's doing. And, and then corrective books within our own camp, within my own camp, like How Saved Are We, uh, 1990, or Whatever Happened to the Power of God, 1991, or It's Time to Rock the Boat, 1993, or, or Playing with Holy Fire, a Wake Up Call to the Pentecostal Charismatic Church in 2018. So all these books I've written about revival in the church, and of course preached endlessly all over America and around the world on revival, and, and participated probably over a thousand, well over a thousand revival services in the midst of the Brownsville revival and, and more really in travel. Uh, and, and then the, the books, yeah, so the books you've written critiquing your own camp, the cessationist camp, the reform camp, whatever the camp may be, Lutheran, Presbyterian, the anti-charismatic camp, because obviously we, we critique our own first before we go attacking others, right? We, we find the, the mess in our own midst before we go attacking others. So I'm just wondering, uh, about the books you've, you've written on, on those subjects, uh, on revival and the critiques that you've written on your own. Oh, 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 you haven't. Oh, okay, I get it. I get it. It's not your calling. God, it's not, and, and, and it, it takes too much time to, to put all this material together, bashing the charismatics. Got it. All clear. No problem. Um, well, a few other books I've, I've written. Let's just grab this last pile here. Um, let's see. There's a practical book like Go and Sin No More. It's a, it's a major practical one to really help believers grow in, in holiness and in the grace of God. And, and then there's hyper grace dealing with a major error that, that had to be confronted in depth, naming names. And then follow up to that, the grace controversy. And then a teaching book on who is the God of the Old Testament, compassion, father, consuming fire, who is the God of the Old Testament. And then during COVID, I wrote When the World Stops, a, a whole book on the power of music. And then Breaking the Stronghold of Food, Nancy and I wrote to tell our stories and, and life transformation. And then uh, Authentic Fire. Uh, uh, to, so what's real, what's not? That was response to Pastor MacArthur's Strange Fire. And then practical books like, like uh, Has God Failed You? you, know, what, do you what do you do in, when you've lost faith or why so many Christians have left, left the faith? Books like that. Uh, and, and then books dealing with political issues, Donald Trump is not my savior, or evangelicals at the crossroads where we pass the Trump test, or the political seduction of, of the church. I think we've got a couple of duplicates here, but I think that's, that's pretty much it here. Um, so I, I'm just wondering what are the books you've written on those subjects to, to help the body and to help equip the church and, and strengthen us to do the will of God and to... to, to be doctrinally sound. Oh, not afraid of the Antichrist. Well, I don't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture together with, with uh, Craig Keener. And I think we left out uh, uh, oh, another, another fire book, right? The co-author together with Pastor John Kilpatrick, The Fire That Never Sleeps. 
so just wondering which books you've written and materials to help equip the body and doctrine. And Oh, that's not your calling. Got it. Okay. And of course, you don't have time to do that because you've got all this other important work to do, bashing the charismatics. Mm. But somehow, somehow, I'm the one that's in error. I'm the one that's not being obedient to God, that's not being a watchman on the wall, because I don't spend all my time doing what you're doing. Hmm. I see a bit of a pattern developing here. We'll be right back. You know, a simple point I'm making is I could challenge you on all these things God's called me to do. Every one of them is important. Every one I could give my life to, whether it's teaching doctrine, whether it's bringing, uh, sparking revival in the church, whether it's calling, equipping the body for the culture wars, whether it's Jewish outreach and apologetics, whether it's academic work and, and on and on. I easily give my life to any one of these. I'm working on book number 50 now, but, but this takes a whole lot of time. If you've ever written a book... This takes a whole lot of time. If you've ever written an academic commentary, it can take years and years and years of your life. So I've got to do what God's called me to do to serve you. I've got to give account to him, right? Not to a critic, not to a human being, not to a pastor, not to a friend, not to a spouse, but I've got to give account to him just like you do. And we will give account. Romans 14, 12 says we will give account for our lives. Second Corinthians 5, 10 says the same thing. So I've got to run the race God set before me and it, it's a full race. It's a full race. Or I could turn around and say, how come you're not doing this and this and this and this and this and you're spending all this time just bashing us? How's that work out? How's that work out? Now, there's another thing that takes a little bit of my time. It's called this. It's called the line of fire. It's called five days a week of live talk radio. And in some cases, there's a lot of preparation before a show and then the time of the show itself. And for years, we did two hours of live talk radio every single day. Oh, and in January, we launched a new broadcast. It is a 30-minute equipping version of the Line of Fire that launched on a couple hundred plus stations in January. As we have funds, we'll put it on more and more stations across America. So I record an additional five 30-minute shows every single week as well. Oh, oh but, but hang on. I wonder why you're not doing that. I wonder why you're not on live talk radio tackling the issues. And I wonder why you're not doing a 30 minute equipping bro. Oh, it's not your calling. Okay. I got it. It's not your calling. Plus you don't have time to do that because you spend all your time bashing the charismatics. Got it. All clear. Well, you know, since 2010, 2010, the first time, but really 2012, it started going. So since 2012, so roughly the last 11, 12 years, God's called me to write a lot of articles. And, and what's happening in the world today, I just wrote one about the delicate dance for, for believers that, that want to vote for Donald Trump, but don't want to be primarily identified as Trump voters. As they want to be identified as followers of Jesus more, n- negotiating that and, you know, what's happening in Israel. So I'm writing articles, normally four or five articles every single week. That's in addition to all the books. That's in addition to all the radio. Okay. Now, uh, if you compute it, let's say an article is roughly a thousand words. All right, so so that would be if you break that down. If you say, let's say there's 600 words on a printed page, we printed it out. That would be five. Well, let's start getting. What does 5,000 pages look like? This is in addition to the books. These are the articles that I have written um, in just the last 11, 12 years. 3,000 articles, averaging four or five uh, per week. Yeah, let me pull them in here. There we go. That, basically, if you printed them up. That's what we have here. Uh, I'm just wondering about the articles that you're writing, uh, dealing with the culture wars, dealing with the war in Israel, dealing with world situations to help Christians negotiate their way through. I'm, I'm just wondering, maybe not 3,000, maybe 300, maybe 30. Oh, that's not your calling. You're not burdened to do that. And, and plus, you don't have time because it takes a lot of time to bash the charismatics with all the weirdness and, and stuff in army. Okay, got it all, all clear. Um, you know... There's another thing that I'm called to do, and that's it's teach in school settings. So I taught at or led ministry schools basically from 1982 to around 2019 with rare interruption. And that's time and energy. But now that our, our school, Fire School of Ministry, is entirely online, I have no responsibilities with that. During the school year, I teach at three different schools uh, virtually every month. Uh, Christ for the Nations in Dallas. Spiritual Leadership School in Fort Worth, 
Nations College in Orlando. So I commute to, to do that uh, basically almost every month during the school year. Not every one is every month. Three, three days at one, two days at another, one day at another. So that's every month added in. And then once a year, do five days intensive course for the Global Awakening Theological Seminary. And now YWAM has asked me to come once a year to their base in Kona, Hawaii, and to teach and train and equip there. So that's five different schools. Plus, since the mid-90s, I've been a visiting or adjunct professor at seven different seminaries, which takes a little time and there's preparation and there's work and there's classes. So there's, there's that as well. Oh, hang on. Uh, I also have the joy of, of uh, traveling and preaching. Yes, yeah, so I've been, uh, last year was on the road 120 days. 120 days I was either traveling or speaking, teaching, preaching, uh, numerous churches, schools, etc. So that, I'm just, just wondering how much time you've taken on a regular basis, weekly, monthly basis, teaching in Bible colleges, teaching in seminaries, being a professor. Oh, that's not your calling. Or it's not you're gifting your burden and, okay, got it. And you don't have time. All clear. No problem. No, no problem. Um, what about international travel? <clears throat> Let's put the map up there. I, I've had the joy of going outside the U.S. well over 200 times, well over, but overseas, about 180 trips. So leave, leave the map up there. About 180 trips worldwide. Now, when we put the map up, there's some countries that are so close together, we, we just kind of group things. Like, you know, different Italy, parts of Europe, like 27 times here or there. Or India, we put that up. There's 29 times just to India. And by the way, my India trips... It's about 40 hours, 40 to 45 hours each way. So 80 to 90 hours round trip. I've done that 29 times plus the ministry time in India. You know, Australia four times, New Zealand once, Singapore five times. These are pretty far away. You know, Japan, China, Philippines three times, et cetera. Uh, Israel was it 18 times now. England about the same and Germany. And so I've been to, I think about 35 countries. I lost track with Canada. Maybe it's 25, 30 trips to, to Canada. So it takes a lot of time. International travel takes a lot of time. Jet lag, ministry. So just overseas, that's, that's about 180 trips. I spent years of my life serving around the world, ministering, doing missions work around the world. I'm just curious as to how much of that you're doing. I mean, just ask my, my critic friends how much time you're spending out on the mission field, how much time you're going to equipping missionaries. Uh, how much time you're, you're working with those who are fighting human trafficking and things like that, because a lot of our missionaries are doing that overseas as well. Uh, how much you're working with church planters going to unreached parts of the world, because we're, we're working with folks doing that. How much you're working with persecuted church in the midst of suffering, because we're going that sometimes right on the front lines physically with them. Just, just wondering, because that's taken on years, years and years and years and years of my life. One of the great privileges I have. Just wondering how, how much of your time you've taken. Oh, that's not your calling. You're not burdened to really do that. World missions is kind of secondary because you know, others are doing that. And plus, you don't have time. Yeah, I mean, how could you do all that and just bash charismatics all the time? I get it. All, all clear. No problem whatsoever. Um, oh, is there anything? Oh, oh you know, you know what? <clears throat> I actually have something called family. Yeah. So there's Nancy, my bride of 48 plus years. And then our wonderful daughters and sons-in-law and four grandkids. So there's time with family. And then there's relationship with God, right? Time alone with the Lord. So in the word, prayer. And then once a month, I, I stop everything for a weekend and just do a prayer retreat just to get alone with the Lord and spend time with him, quality time with the Lord to really focus and be everything he wants me to be so I can more effectively serve you and glorify Jesus that takes time, energy. Um, and then all the people coming with problems, issues, pastors, leaders that look to us for counsel and doing that. And then the biggest project of all is taking the most of my time. I can't even tell you about that's that's behind the scenes going on. And hopefully a few more months we can let you know about that. So I, I kind of busy and I'm sorry I can't read all your comments on social media. I'm sorry I can't devote all my time to calling out the people you think I should call out, but God's got me pretty busy and I'm pretty blessed. 
And I'll tell you what, you run your race, I'll run mine.